In this lesson group, we focus on the components of a chemical reaction and how to engineer a chemical reaction. We'll be using this image of baking soda and vinegar being combined to help illustrate the phenomenon that when we mix different substances together, we get different results. Chemical reactions really epitomize the cross-cutting concept of energy and matter. We can ask where the ingredients come from to make the chemical reaction, or if any of the products escape. But most importantly, but most importantly, we can ask, does the matter change forms along the way? Which brings us to this essential piece of the cross-cutting concept, that every change in matter must be caused by a change in energy. Photosynthesis and respiration that we're going to study in this unit are great examples. In Lesson 3.7, students begin by summarizing the ingredients to photosynthesis and how they change. But does matter always change when it mixes together? We use students' prior knowledge of mixing materials to introduce the phenomenon that when we mix different substances together, we get different results. Students are going to spend the rest of the class period going through stations, mixing different materials together and observing what happens. They'll record their observations in their Chemical Reaction Stations data table. In Lesson 3.8, students have some time to finish their stations from the previous class period. Then we guide students through recognizing patterns. In this case, the patterns allow students to discover different forms of evidence that a chemical reaction has occurred. We then revisit the unit roadmap to focus we then revisit the unit roadmap and focus on the frame about baking bread. During the class discussion, students conclude that all cooking is a chemical reaction because they've seen the different types of evidence that they can use to see that new substances are formed. In lesson 3.9, we revisit our chemical reaction stations and focus on the mixtures with noticeable temperature changes. What does this tell us about how energy changes in the system? Where does the energy come from to heat a mixture up? Or what happens to the thermal energy if the mixture cools down? It has to go somewhere. We define exothermic and endothermic reactions and then brainstorm some real-world applications of them. We then present the Engineer It Design Project Instruction Sheets. Students will need to build a device that will help them in their everyday lives that either absorbs or releases thermal energy using a chemical reaction. After a brief discussion of the project and the timeline, we look over the rubric for the project, the materials list handout, out, and then a written worksheet guides students through the process where they're going to brainstorm, define criteria, and submit a project proposal by the end of class. Now, as a teacher, we've got a little bit of homework. We need to review their project proposals and give them feedback before tomorrow. In Lesson 3.10, students receive the reviewed proposals back and make modifications as needed. Students are going to use the Materials List handout and the Engineer at Project handout from last session for this class period. Once their proposals have been approved, it's time to gather materials to build and test their prototypes. When they're ready to do their testing, they receive the Engineer at Part 2 data collection handout as a template for their testing data. In Lesson 3.11, students meet with other teams that are working on the same type of device, such as a hot pack or a cold pack, and they share their prototypes and the data collected so far. We want them to evaluate the different design solutions and the test results. What can they learn from others to improve their own design? We draw their attention to similarities in results and what might cause any differences. If those differences make things perform better, then we should try to integrate those differences into our designs. Then the students move into a jigsaw group to share their findings. If time permits, students are going to work on redesigning and testing their devices until the end of class. In the next lesson, students wrap up their designs. They write the final reports that document their design process. Finally, students participate in the unit concept checkpoint number one, a series of challenging multiple choice questions specifically designed to assess student understanding of the key concepts in the unit so far. Photosynthesis is a great example of a chemical reaction. And food undergoes some more chemical reactions when it gets inside our body. And that's what's up next, respiration.